Welcome to Photography BB's Artistry Actions for Photoshop. I'm Dave Seram, the Editor-in-Chief of Photography BB, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate our brand new Silverpoint Photoshop Action. Our Silverpoint Action is the result of years of refinement before we release this final version of the action that we are extremely proud of. Silverpoint is an ancient method of drawing, signature to many of the artistic masters throughout history. The effect is similar to a pencil sketch, but evolved throughout the ages to also include a unique element of a white pencil or chalk-like sketch on top of a parchment-style paper. So we think you're going to have a lot of fun with this one. And before we dive into the Silverpoint Action tutorial, here are some quick but important points. So before we begin, a brief word on compatibility. Due to the way that Photoshop works, these actions are not compatible with every version of Photoshop. We've created these to work on Photoshop CC 2015 and newer to utilize some of the newest innovations that Adobe has included in their more recent versions of Photoshop. Additionally, because of the way that actions work, these are only compatible with English language versions of Photoshop. Our Photography BB artistry actions are designed to work with a variety of image resolutions and sizes. However, due to the way that Photoshop filters work, the results will look different when running any Photoshop action on high res versus low res images. We have designed the Photography BB artistry actions to work with high res images, either RAW or JPEG files shot with a DSLR camera. Additionally, some of our actions include a version of the action optimized for lower res images either shot with a smartphone or a point and shoot camera. When running the action, choose either the high or low res action option depending on the image you are working with. The ideal image size for optimal results is anywhere between 3000 to 5000 pixels along the long edge of your image. Another point to note is that our actions are entirely non-destructive. Every one of our actions will create a duplicate file, leaving your original image files completely untouched. So once you've downloaded your Photography BB artistry actions, your first step is to install them. Installing actions into Photoshop is relatively easy, but before you do so, I'd like to make one suggestion. I like to keep all of my Photoshop actions in one place separate from the default download folder that your system probably receives them in when you download them for the first time. For myself, I like to create one main folder on my hard drive, in this case, the Pictures folder on my Mac. Inside this main Pictures folder, I then create three subfolders, one for Lightroom presets, photos, which contains every single photograph that I have on my computer, and one more for Photoshop Actions. I do this to keep everything in one place. It makes things much easier if I ever need to reinstall Photoshop one day, or even when I upgrade to a new hard drive or a new computer. This way I can just copy over either my entire pictures folder to a new computer or just the Photoshop actions themselves. Now this is just my personal preference, but I've found it to be a huge time saver over the years and I would highly recommend this storage hierarchy for you too. Once you've downloaded the actions to your computer, you can now install them into Photoshop. So to do this, open Photoshop and go to the menu, Window, Actions. When the Actions panel appears, click on the little drop-down arrow menu and go to Load Actions. Then navigate to the action you would like to install and click Open. Your action will now be ready to use inside the Photoshop Actions panel. Once you've installed the Photography BB Silver Point Action, it will appear in the Photoshop Actions panel. If you don't see the Actions panel in your toolbar, you can make it visible by going to the menu Window Actions. This set contains four actions that operate in a two-step procedure. The first action, step one, allows you to choose the areas of your image that should be visible in the final sketch. Now one important point to note is that this action is highly CPU intensive. So because of this, we've created three versions of the step two action, those being silver point designed for high res images and includes all the elements of this effect. Now this one may take up to five minutes to run depending on the size and complexity of your photograph. The second option for step two is a version of the effect without the scratch effects that we have in the final image, and this dramatically reduces the processing time. This version is also designed for high res images, and again, will run considerably more quickly than the above version with the scratches. 
And lastly, we have a version for low res images, which does include all of the features and scratch effects. Because this action runs relatively quickly on low res images, there's no need to have a separate version for low res images without the scratch effect like we've done for the high res versions above. So let's start with a photograph that you would like to turn into a silver point style sketch. Now, I originally created this action having it in mind to use on architectural subjects. However, many of our users have sent in silver point sketches of everything from flowers to portraits to landscapes, and I've been absolutely blown away by the results on different subjects. It's amazing to see so much creativity at work, and the results again have just been so unique and refreshing. So because of the variety that I've seen from our users, I can say that this action truly works on all types of photographs. So the first thing I do with this photograph is I'm going to click on step one, select focus, and then click the play button at the bottom of the actions panel. So close the dialog box that appears and then use the brush tool to paint over your photograph, covering the areas that you want to remain visible in the final image. So anything left unbrushed here will simply fade out to the simulated parchment texture. Now feel free to adjust your brush size and hardness at your discretion, but be sure to keep the brush opacity at 100%. If for any reason it's not at 100%, you can press the zero key, which will increase the brush opacity to 100% for you. So you can also paint over as many different areas as you like for a different effect. It doesn't have to be just one area. And in fact, with this action in particular, you may find that covering several separate areas often creates a more interesting final sketch. I would also recommend staying just inside the main subject area around where you're painting to produce the best results. So I'm gonna paint over this image like this. And that's good. Okay, after you have this brushed area over your photograph, select the appropriate high or low res version of the step two silver point action in the actions panel and click play. So again, this action is very, very CPU intensive, especially on high res images like this one here. So depending on the speed and configuration of your computer, this action may take up to five minutes to complete. So I'm gonna pause and speed up the process here for the sake of this demonstration. Okay, so there we go. Now the first thing to do here is to close this dialog box by clicking stop or continue. And I'm also going to close the actions panel out of the way here so we can have a better look. And let's zoom in to like 75% to examine the effect more closely. So the first thing you'll notice is the obvious presence of this parchment background, the black sketch areas and lines, and also now this white sketched area as well. Now you can also see we have these really cool scratches that cover the sketch, giving it a really weathered type of look. And contrary to how silver point drawings were actually produced using no real ink at all, we felt the final effect would still benefit from some subtle ink splatter just to give it that extra bit of character. Now everything I've just outlined here, all of these elements, these are all easily adjustable. So let's dive in and take a look. So if we hop on over to the layers palette, you'll see we have several layer groups that can each be toggled open by clicking on the little toggle arrow next to each group name. The first group is our sketch lines, which contains all of the sketch layers. There are four different layers of sketch lines to this effect, and you can reduce or increase the opacity of each of these layers to change the look of your sketch to your liking. So next we have the scratches group, unless you've run the version of this action that has no scratches. So inside here, there are two layers. The first one controls the visibility of the larger scratches that cover the entire image. So feel free to adjust the opacity or the visibility of this layer to your liking. The next layer contains the smaller scratches that would generally be visible only around the outer edges of your subject. So if I turn off the visibility of those larger scratches, you can see how these smaller scratches are just around the outer areas of the subject. And again, you can adjust the opacity or visibility of this layer to your liking. Now I love these scratches, so I'm gonna leave both layers turned on. And in fact, 
You can take this a step further by playing with the layer mask of each of these scratch layers here too. So you can click on the layer mask of say the scratches layer here and make sure you're clicking right on the thumbnail of the layer mask right here. Then if your brush tool isn't still selected, although it should be, click the letter B on the keyboard to use the brush tool and then click on the letter X on the keyboard to switch the default paint swatches here to white and then just paint anywhere over your image that you would like to add more scratches. So if you add too many, or if you want to remove some, you can click the X key again to exchange the white black swatches. And now you'll be painting with black over your image, which will remove the scratches wherever you're painting. So you can get really creative here with some of the scratch effects. So next we have the highlights group. And if I open that up, you'll see we have several options. The first is the strength of the actual uh, sketch texture in the white areas of your image. Now I'm going to zoom in here to 100% so you can see the effect when I toggle the visibility of this layer on and off. So as you can see, we can adjust the texture just inside the white areas. And you can also adjust the opacity if you want to decrease or increase the strength of this effect. Now next you have the choice of how large you would like these white highlight areas to be. So heavy is the default, or you can change it to medium or light, depending on the type of image you're working with and which option suits your photograph the best. So I'm gonna turn off heavy and then turn on light white, just so you can see the difference between the heavy and the light white areas. So here you can see heavy kept all of the white in this area here, whereas light, it only keeps the white in these areas and not so much in this area anymore. And of course, medium will be right in between. So I think medium is pretty cool for this image and I'm gonna leave it there on medium. Now you can also adjust the white details and black highlight details to suit your image to taste. And these are just controlling the brightness and darkness of some of the more white and black areas in the image. So again, feel free to adjust the layer opacity of either of these layers. Now our next group contains these splatter effects, which include a fine splatter and a medium splatter option that's turned off by default. So turning on the visibility of the medium splatter layer will simply add more and larger splatter dots to the image. So feel free to play with the layer opacity or the visibility for different effects here too. And last is the paper background, where you can adjust the default texture, visibility, or opacity, or you can click open the layer effects options for the paper color layer and change it to suit your image. Although we think the default setting is pretty sweet. So to change the paper color though, you can double click on the color overlay layer effect, click on the color swatch, and change it to another color if you like, like this. And we can close that up. So there you have it. Our Photography BB Silver Point Sketch. We think with this action, everyone is going to be in awe of what you can create using this effect with your photographs. So thanks again for checking out this tutorial. Grab your Silver Point action below this video and have a blast creating some of the most unique photo sketches with your photography. Enjoy.